Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel. Uh, can someone please confirm that you hear me well? Because uh, I don't hear the sound, so I'm a, I'm a bit afraid uh, that you don't hear me. I don't want to speak like uh, 10 minutes without any sound. Should work, but just to have a double check, uh, please say yes if you hear me. Okay, Peloso already confirmed, thank you for all the people. Uh, thank you for being here, uh, post-game of Juventus 1, Freiburg 0. Um, Juventus won, but I will already start reassuring people um, about the injury of Federico Chiesa um, because a lot of people were asking for it. Uh, so we have the picture. Thank you to Out of Context or No Context uh, Gigas Juve that uh, watched it and posted it. So uh, ex thank you to Alexis Cara Guedzian that just uh, subscribed for 10 months, happy with the 1-0, but we were down 10 men, Federico Chiesa hopefully is doing well, so you can see here what is happening to Federico Chiesa with the zoom, so actually when he was about to shot on goal, he has put his right foot on the ground, and actually it's a kind of distortion, something like that, uh, so it should not be, you know, like it's a stretch to the tendon probably, shot not be really severe should not be really severe i believe that from that moment on federico chiesa he played all the back on track documentary three time in his head remembering all the time he suffered being scared uh i believe that um that that's what happened but i am not doctor yeah of course it's the knee you're putting here, or it can be the tendon, or it can be the knee. Uh, we will have to evaluate. Um, we will have to evaluate. I am, I am a, of course, I'm not a doctor, guys. Huh? I'm not a doctor. I'm showing you the exact moment it happened, but then what happens there? Uh, I hope it's nothing severe. It's more the hope that is uh, speaking that the experience. I never had that kind of injury. Just that. Um, I'm I'm a bit scared and in a way I'm 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 happy that uh, we saw him continuing to walk. Um, I remember that uh, the 9th of January 2022, he was on the ground. He tried and he couldn't and he was crying. This time, is it more the fear or not? I don't know. I just know that uh, he was scared to to run to to go. Um, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, because we were waiting for him and um, and that. Now, um, when when people were really angry about uh, the technical staff that we were not starting Federico Chiesa, there is a reason why uh, we were not starting Federico Chiesa. Because regardless of whatever, he's not at 100% and we need some time. So hopefully he's good, he's doing good. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Hopefully he needs to rest versus uh, Sampdoria, Freiburg, even uh, Inter and he's coming back after the international break. Maybe it's okay and he will be there. Um, I, I hope, I really hope for him more than for us, for him, because after a year like he had, I hope it's nothing serious, but when people are really angry, why is people not playing? Why is this not playing? Why is this not starting? There are so many, so many things that has to be taken into consideration that we don't see, that we don't see because we are not there with them in the training ground every single day. And uh, if you needed uh, a proof why Federico Chiesa this year can't be considered a starter of the game, well, you had a proof today in evidence. Anyway, we'll continue speaking about Federico Chiesa a bit later. Let me uh, answer the question of Octavio. Octavio, thank you for your donation. Really, really appreciate it, my friend. Octavio that is asking Beppe, uh, it's Vlaho Flop. That's the nickname or, you know, uh, to express the feeling, is Vlaovic a flop? Uh, no, he's not a flop. But I believe he was the worst on the field uh, today. Today, we can't blame the team of not playing for him. Today, we can't blame the team of creating. But everything he did was the opposite of the right decision today. Um... I will 
especially in that moment of difficulty of a player, I am made like that, guys. I am made like that when I see a player in a real difficult moment, I will try to support him even more. So I will not be harsh on him today, but I will be honest and neutral and objective. Yes, it was probably the worst game that Vlaovic did at Juventus. He's totally out of the game mentally. He's doing every single decision an opposite one. Then I am not... I am not someone, you know it, that uh, go with big ball statement, out, flop, ba ba bi ba 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 because I try to analyze the 360 degree. I will support Dusan Vlaovic because I believe he has a lot in him, but at the moment he's not able to show him. I even felt really sad for him at a specific moment where he's missing a goal. He missed a lot. At a certain moment, he's missing one. I don't even remember which one. And you see that he is auto-convincing himself that it will be okay, that it will come good, that he, that it's just a moment. You clearly see that he's speaking to himself. And to be honest, guys, yes, the performance was awful of Dusan Vlaovic, but that broke my heart. That really broke my heart. But sincerely, yeah. It's not because he's uh, sad that I will say now, no, he played well. No, he didn't play well. He missed some goals that Vlaovic would have scored, that the Vlaovic that we know would have scored. He's totally out mentally. Totally out. Totally, totally, totally out. And it's worrying because... Uh, we have the words of Max Allegri. Thank you, No Context GG Stupid, that is reporting us um, the real time situation. So I see the notification. Allegri said to the microphones in post game Allegri, um, Chiesa, uh, we will see, but I believe it's nothing. Of course, he's not analyzing it, he's just seeing. He probably spoke and changed a few words with him. He said, we will evaluate, but I believe he has nothing. Uh, Philip Rosada in our chat. Philip Rosada is the one that is writing to me. Uh, but um, yeah, again, again, to come back. So I will keep you updated about all the news of uh, Federico Chiesa. That is a priority for us. And it's a priority for him as well to feel well. Hopefully he can come out with I'm feeling well. That would be great. But uh, let's evaluate, especially tomorrow morning. Um, about about our friend Dusan Vlaovic. Again, I will not be reactionary. Today, he played the worst game at Juve ever. Why? Because if a lot of time, a lot of people are taking parts, like blaming the team and the way of playing, Allegri, it's always because of someone else. Then you have another part that is since long already saying Vlaovic, it's not performing, it's not performing. I have always been balanced between both because I believe it's always somewhere in the middle. Well, today it's on Vlaovic. It is on Vlaovic, but I believe that he will bounce back like Anthony Schifano is saying in the chat. Uh, because you don't lose your talent. You never lose your talent. Someone said it's part of the process. I don't see who it was because you are writing a lot and thanks for that. But someone said a bit earlier, it is part of the growing process, part of the development from Jim. I saw his Jim. So... Um, it's also part mentally. That's we always said for, since the first games of Dusan Vlaovic when he was doing well, we said attenzione because the mental, he's really angry when he's subbed out, he's really angry when he's missing something, he's a perfectionist, and sometimes you have to accept that sometimes you miss. But if he continue in that limbo of negativity, it will be harder and harder for him. I was really praying that Vlaovic was able to put away all the negativity that is in his head to focus on what he's doing the best. And what is he doing the best? It's running in spaces, going and being a killer in front of the goal, which today was really bad. But it's true, huh? Aldo is saying it as well in the chat. Today, the, the, the positioning of Vlaovic was bad. From the moment that he started to miss one, two, three attempts, he totally went out of the game in terms of passes were really bad and so on and so on. 
uh, I see some some strange words, some insults uh, in the chat from Amir. Amir, I don't really know you. Just know one thing: on this channel, we can take whatever side. We can be pro, we can be contra, uh, we can criticize, but we respect each other. That's super important. If you are not able to respect each other, and when I'm saying each other, is all the people in the chat different opinion or not, it's myself, of course, <laughs> uh, a bit of respect for me, but also the players and, and the coach and the club that we are supporting. If you are not able to do that, then uh, then you are not welcome. I hope I said it uh, in a polite way. Uh, I will read the words of Ryan in a second, but let me first say thank you to Mikey Mazzarese. Ciao Beppe, I'm happy about the win, but not about the performance. And another bad performance from Vlavic. He has zero confidence right now. Not good. We were just speaking about... Thank you, Mikey, by the way. Um, we were just speaking about Dusan Vlavic. Confidence, I would say that is at minus 10. Not at zero. At minus 10. On the other side, um, Dush, the performance... I don't necessarily agree that we didn't do a beautiful performance. We did a good performance. A solid performance. Except of some moments of the game. But we were not able to finish. And that is a problem that we have to solve and that we are not able to solve. Because at the moment, I don't know, but we are not able to solve them. That's a real problem because you can't play in your stadium having 20 attempts, if I'm not wrong. 20 attempts. Um, let me check just to have the correct numbers. 20 attempts. 6 on target. 12 shots from inside the box. 8 from outside of the box. And scoring only one with the header of Di Maria. I don't remember a goal of the header of Di Maria. I don't remember it. Yeah, of course, I remember with Juve. But it's already his second goal with the header at Juventus. Um, he's not the one that should be there for the header. Thankfully, he's there. Luckily, he's there. But that's not his position. So luckily, he's saving our ass, to be honest. But that's not okay. Uh, but the performance in itself, guys, if you're looking for where we come and what we are doing... I have to say that I saw a Juventus always propositive, always trying to play, uh, doing much better. A uh, Miretti that was okay for a comeback, but not enough. I was thinking that he would be changed. He was changed. Beautiful impact of Fagioli into the game. Defensive side of, La of uh, Locatelli, great. I love seeing him a lot of time trying to go with some attempts on target. At least that was his trying without success, unfortunately. I love the game of Quadrado today. Um, Kostic didn't do a lot, but he was there for the cross and that was super important. 11th cross of the season for him. So I don't agree with the performance that I want to come back. Uh, do we need to finish the game 4-0? Yes, yes. Yes, we need to finish the game 4-0. And on that one, I am absolutely not happy. We need to finish 4-0 that game. And luckily, the player from Freiburg is taking that ball with a hand, assisting it with a hand. I didn't even see it in life. Lucky, eh? Because one shot on target, one attempt, and it was the first one, and we said it during the life, when they will go on target, they will score. And they scored. Alexis Karaguedzian, my friend, again, thank you for your donation, my friend, from UK, I don't know where in UK, maybe London, but Alexis is telling me, Beppe, honestly, I think Vlavic is improving with his build-up play and link-up play, but in the box and his movement he is a disaster and his confidence is low, but he's only 23, more than half of the game is mental, I agree. I agree, it's a perfect description of the moment of Dusan Vlaovic that is improving in where he had a lot of weaknesses. That means the build-up, that means linking up, you know, like Trezeguet was a master in linking up with other players. Again, thank you, Alexis. Um, and he's improving, we see it, especially in the beginning of the game, it was fantastic today. It, in the link-up and the build-up, fantastic. But then he starts to not go on target. Then he starts to miss a goal. Then he starts with a missing pass. And from that moment on, he totally flops his game. And what we remember from Vlaovic in the game of today is, of course, the consecutive flops that he had. Because he's doing a fantastic movement on that dribble where he's winning that free kick that Cuadrado was on target. Fantastic movement of him. He's going full of confidence, dribbling a bit more on the right side. Fault. And then where 
he starts really to flop his game is where he's going in counter-attack and he's losing that ball but so easily caught up by the defender so easily intercepted by the defender that plus a sitter that is missing and he's totally destroyed and when you are seeing more than half of the game is mental if you're looking at the um, documentary back on track one of the first things that has been said in a doc documentary is they are saying for an injury, for the rehab, 70% is playing in your head. I believe also that on the field, 70% is in your head. And at the moment, he's not there. He's absolutely not there. So uh, we agree. Huh? We all agree on that. I don't believe, guys, that uh, we are harsh on him. But, 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 but. The guy is 23, but even 35 or whatever, there are moments like that, especially for strikers. You have two positions that are really, really difficult. The goalkeeper, because the goalkeeper, one mistake and it's goal. And the strikers, because they are judged a lot of time on you score, you don't score. And he's learning. It's a process. He's growing. He didn't do a great game. And he's coming from now. It's the fifth game without goal, scoring a goal. He needs to score. He needs to do better. But if we are the first one to start building a case against Dusan Vlaovic, guys, we are absolutely not helping a person that is not technically in difficulty. Yeah, he is. But that's a consequence of his mental. If we start like that, guys then it will be really, really difficult. Kiesa felt a discomfort. Thank you for your donation, Alexi. Kiesa felt a discomfort. Hopefully nothing serious. Yeah, we reported that uh, word by Allegri. Thank you, Ryan, for keeping us up to date. Steve, hopefully he bounced back at Juve and not at Bayern because that's another thing. Uh, if we are pushing our players away because they have some difficulties, it happens a lot of time, huh? Uh... That doesn't mean that we have to say that he's great, that he did fantastic. No, criticizing, but attention. Because the papers tomorrow, they will go. Eh? Caso Vlaovic, problem Vlaovic. Uh, Luca, also Vieli was struggling. Oh, of course, Luca, thank you. Grazie, Luca. And I'm sure that a lot of people will, no, a lot, some people that are quite old they will remember I, I spoke about it so many times also on the channel about Luca Vialli that was depressed on the stair sitting there nearly crying saying to Lippi it's over I'm sorry I can't be the captain of that team I no, I can't be the leader of the team I can't be the striker that you are when Lippi is giving him that confidence saying attenzione Luca I am counting for you for next season I'm counting on you because you are not only a great player, but you are the captain now of that team. And Luca Vialli is changing totally. Uh, but Luca Vialli had a lot of difficulties. Zidane, a lot of people. Um, so, Beppe, we should also remember Alexandro went out as well. Okay, there is also something, guys, I will, I will tell you because then we have some problem... Uh, then we have some problems with the rule of the substitution because I saw during the live people, and I understand that not everyone knows every rule, uh, but I also saw some people online on Twitter that are supposed, you know, to give you the news. Uh, they don't understand the rule, and that's something that I tell you so that you keep in mind. So what is the rule of new football with the substitutions? You can change five different players, okay? But the five different players, you can sub them in three different slot plus mid between the halves so between the first and the second halves you have a free slot okay so easy five different players can be don't necessarily have to but can be subbed out five in three different moments of playing time plus eventually in half time so it's four Okay, a la mi-temps, half time. What Juventus did was Alexandro in the first half. That was the first one. Alexandro, one slot. Miretti in the sec in between one and two. So it's a free slot. You don't have to count him as a slot, but you have to count him as a man. We changed 
Federico Chiesa for Vlaovic, second slot, and you change. Keen for Kostic, third slot. 3 plus 1 of Miretti between half time, it means that it's over. You can't put in another player. And that's important. That's also why Federico Chiesa stayed on the field and played with one leg and played in one touch to give the ball back. According to me, he should have gone out because not only I was worried, but the supporters were worried, technical staff, and I believe also the players. This is also something, and I will read the comment of uh, Softich again about Vlaovic, I believe, in a second. Let me go to the comment of Softich. But, uh, ciao Juve Pulse, by the way, Anthony Trimboli and all the people. Um, but, Juventus plays well, missing a lot of sitters, which should not have happened, until the injury of Federico Chiesa. Because I believe that the f we know it, huh? we are not the mentally strongest team as a team. From that moment on, they were all really scared. And I was worried for Federico, but also worried that the team totally lost focus and that Freiburg was able to take advantage of that situation. The game was over there and Juventus decided to stop. If you can, you can. Uh, like Quadrado tried at the end, but uh, I believe the game was over and I was really scared that at that moment of weakness, they would have killed us. Softich is saying Vlaovic is wrong for Allegri's Juventus. Let him join Bayern and become a top goal scorer. Vlaovic is not the only one getting worse. What about Locatelli? Um... There are two different discussions here. Um, Vlaovic joining a perfectly oiled team like Bayern will do much better than in this Juventus. That is absolutely far from being perfectly oiled. On that we agree. I believe we all agree. We said it. Huh? Uh, but then you have another part of your message, which is what about Locatelli? Uh, I appreciated Locatelli today. I appreciate Locatelli a lot today. We are playing in a three-man midfield. His favorite position, we know it, it's a two-man midfield. But I really, really appreciated Locatelli's performance today, even if, like Gianluca, uh, his sliding tackles are always scaring me so much. But I really appreciated Locatelli as a vocal leader, as a behavior leader on the field. Um, I really appreciate the performance. Then if you are speaking about the total season of Locatelli, he had more downs than up. But I would absolutely not compare Locatelli and Vlaovic. For me, these are two different discussions. Uh, my opinion, uh, Softich, my opinion. Um, Fiorentina isn't oiled. Uh, last year, they were perfectly oiled. They were playing one time a week. Pay attention, uh, that's a big difference. One time a week. Uh, Vlaovic, that was in a Fiorentina that were playing only for him, with mechanism built for him, which probably you're right when you're saying if he's going to Bayern, probably he will do much better. They were playing for a Lewandowski. If they have a Vlaovic, he will, he will do much better and they will even do better than what they are already doing. So we agree with that. But attenzione, because you're comparing a Vlaovic that was playing once a week, a new fresh Vlaovic coming up in Serie A, not known by a lot of players, once a week in a perfect Fiorentina built at the image of Vlaovic, look at how they are struggling this year without him. And you are comparing with a Vlaovic that is coming to Juve mid-season last year with injuries, with injuries in a team that is playing twice a week in a year with a World Cup in the middle, where because he wanted to go to the World Cup, was not able to take some rest to heal perfectly. We know it, he's still struggling with that growing pain. So I believe that we are exaggerating in uh, comparing Fiorentina, Vlaovic and Vlaovic at Juventus without taking everything into consideration. And I agreed with you that the way of playing of Juventus is not the perfect one for Vlaovic. But again, for me, that's what I said, it's both. And then you have U Michele that has just arrived and probably didn't understand the first part or was with us but has absolutely no idea of what I'm speaking about when I'm telling you that in the big first part I was saying that Vlaovic was not good again Vlaovic was not good 
Do we have to repeat the same thing for now 55 minutes or can we speak about the game? Again, Vlaovic is a person in difficulty 70% mentally. He's struggling with a growing pain that is not leaving him alone. Our game of play are not perfect for him, but today, 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 today it's on Vlaovic and not on Juventus. That created a lot more than in every single game I saw at Juventus, even more than when we were playing versus not. The thing is that nobody was able to finalize it. Why? Because they don't watch my videos in the morning. They don't watch them. I don't know why, but uh, when I tell you put someone on the second post and there is nobody on the second post, they have to pay attention for these kind of things. And much more problems that we had that we will talk about now. Uh, Ron Rositano is saying what was the over-under on Locatelli leaving uh, his feet today? A eh, good question. Uh, Di Maria and Locatelli top. I loved Locatelli. I continue to say it. Uh, Thomas, Dusha needs to shave his beard and he will win the Ballon d'Or. True story. Radovan, Pogba was late for training. So if you want to speak about Pogba, give me a second because I saw some people that became member for the first time, like Salkat, becoming member for the channel. Grande Salkat, thank you. Really, really appreciate it, my buddy. But also Sir Raz, uh, member. I believe you were already member, so... Uh, I don't know why he's considering you a new member, but anyway, thank you, Sir Raz. So we have two new members, and then I saw also some other people. Um, Nurka, that is saying, what happened to Pogba? Thank you for your donation. Good question, but before answering that one, let me go on people that tagged me, otherwise they will go crazy. Uh, Fun fact, in last three games in Europa League, Juve went 24 times on target. This isn't something that happens often. Let's hope we can continue like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But we have to score. Uh, but we have to score. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Um, otherwise, it makes no sense. Um, that was the thing that you wanted to say, uh, Dino. I'm trying to see if you tagged me on something else or that was it. That was it. Okay. So fun, fun stat guy, I think I, I really thought it was something super crucial and important. Uh, Anyway, uh, Ryan, Sunday, Chiesa was fine. Tomorrow we will evaluate the situation. So Allegri is saying that. Sandro will definitely not be there. Di Maria is also to be evaluated. And we have several players who are injured. Disaster. Disaster. Total disaster, guys. Uh, Di Maria uh, needs to be evaluated. At the end of the game, he was on his knees. Um, get, you like or you don't like? Vlaovic will, will have to play. I believe that we will see a Cananielis and why not maybe finally the moment of a, a player like uh, Matthias Soule can be. The question about Pogba, guys, I will be short and briefly because I know the rules at Juventus. I will not confirm if it's true or not because it has not been confirmed by Juve. But if we go towards all the journalists that said that he was late, what are they saying? They are saying that Paul Pogba yesterday needed to be at a certain Hour at a meeting of Juventus the day before the game, not all the games, but especially important games and so on, they go into a, it's not a retiro, it's just staying together in the hotel the night before so that they can wake up really early, starting to train, rifinitura, that's how you call it. You do that and then uh, you go together. Maybe they had, I'm just inventing, a meeting at 6 p.m., in the evening and he arrived apparently according to some sources at 7 p.m without real reason without real reason okay so paul pogba uh what is the rule at juventus not speaking about paul pogba speaking about everybody everybody at juventus if you are late you're out of the game oh attention eh? if it's three minutes late because there is a traffic jam something else if you are really late uh you don't play and a lot of times a lot of time when it happens most of the time these kind of things are not leaked on social media by journalists nobody knows 
I know sometimes when it happened, I saw it. Um, I will not reveal who, but there were already these decisions because it's in inside conduct or internal conduct and law. If you are late without a really serious reason, you're out. And that is at the discretion of the coach to put you out for one game, two games, three games, or whatever. Uh, or even call you up with uh, putting you in the bench or in the in the stands, whatever. Happens with a, a youth academy, happens with first team, it happens and we knew it at the beginning of the season because that had been leaked and also said by Juventus Moiskin, Moiskin that was late for Atletico Madrid game, the friendly, do you remember, when he was doing a fantastic or fantastic, a good preseason, he was late. So Pogba, for me, is not 100% at fault. Pogba is 1000% at fault. Juventus is thousand percent correct i don't care if you are pogba if you are sule if you are huysen if you are chesney if you are del piero this is the rule and in on top of that as a player that arrived this season as the player that we all needed and wanted and unfortunately because an injury is not because of you had an injury took wrong decision because he took the injury is not because of him the decision was wrong from him so he are, he's already at fault because he's deciding to heal naturally instead of going under surgery like Juventus said due to that postponed 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 at the day of today the 9th of March he played only 35 minutes no and no I'm sorry. And you know how much I love Pogba. I love Pogba. And I defend him on a lot of things. He's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. Juventus is right. And it happened in other situations. It happened from the youth sector to the first team multiple times. Most of the time people do not even know. Of course, we are criticizing every time the coach when we don't know why is he not playing, why he's not called up, what is happening, why he didn't even play a single second. There are always reasons why. Well, uh, Pogba is at fault. Will he be there for some door, yeah? I don't know. But I believe that Pogba... Hey, attention, eh? Oh, uh, now, now, what I saw online... Maybe it's exaggerated <laughs> because I saw again things like uh, I don't know what happened. Looks like it was the like he committed like three murders. I have always I have also been late in a meeting, an important crucial meeting because I forgot because I forgot and I went to my boss and I said I am sincerely sorry I forgot. I totally forgot. So yeah, it happens. The important thing is that it's not happening again and that he understands that. And Sony, because we have a tweet of Romeo Agresti. Romeo Agresti that is going with uh, Juventus for Alexandro. It is a muscular problem. And on Sunday, he will not be there. Already confirmed by Allegri. While for Chiesa, he felt a pain in the right knee that will need to be evaluated in the next hours. For Di Maria, he's only tired, but anyway, he will also be evaluated in the next hours, okay? So, if we are going with a top three of serious things, we go with Alexandro, the most serious thing, muscular problem. And we will come back on the decision to play Alexandro or not, because I will tell you something, guys. Um, after Alexandro, we go to uh, Fe Federico Chiesa, that right knee, a pain, needs to be evaluated, but it's not what he had the first time and then really tired for uh, Di Maria that is not a player for 90 minutes guys he's not a player for 90 minutes so maybe he will uh, not be there versus Sampdoria maybe well but it, it is it is annoying eh? anyway let's go to um, something else 
let's go to something else because we spoke a lot about uh, Pogba, um, Vlahovic especially and so on. Uh, by the way, Nurka, uh, I already read. But then we have Emiliano Berardi. Emiliano Berardi that became a member of the channel. A lot of new members today on the channel. I'm super proud, super happy. Grazie ragazzi. Really, really appreciate it. Grazie ragazzi. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, okay, if we go to the starting 11, uh, and you will understand what I mean with uh, we have things to say. Um, But we can go also to the to the to the scores of the other teams. Huh? Union Ber Union Berlin three, Union Saint Gilloise three, Leverkusen two, Ferenc Varos zero, Roma two, Real Sociedad zero. Who scored for Roma? I don't know. Uh, Kumbula and El Sharawi. Okay. Sporting two, Arsenal two, Juventus one. Freiburg 0, Manchester United 4, Betis 1, I don't care who scored, Sevilla 2, Fenerbahce 0, Shakhtar 1, Feyenoord 1. If we go to Juve, to the starting 11, um, starting 11 of Juventus here, what do we see? We see that we have Chesney to the goal, Danilo Bremer, Alexandro Quadrado, Miretti, Locatelli, Rabio, Kostic, Angel Di Maria, Dusan Vlaovic. 10 on 11 are the same as Roma, except Fagioli was on the bench for Miretti, which I think it's a right choice because you don't know how Miretti would have played. You rest a bit of Fagioli because you know that you will have a lot of games to play and you give Miretti a chance also to play that 3-4-2-1 because in the beginning of the game it was clearly a 3-4-2-1. You play that way, um, but what is interesting is that Max Allegri, with Alexandro and with the medical staff, they said, okay, Alexandro can play. Not 90 minutes, but he can play. Well, Allegri preferred playing Alexandro than playing Bonucci. So when... Uh, eh, this is what Hanini is saying. If Allegri prefers injured Sandro to Bonucci or the other center backs, then our depth is really bad. Well, this is the big message. The hidden message is this one. Is Allegri trust Rugani, but Rugani were in the middle of the defense. When Bremer is not there, he likes Rugani because he's giving him confidence. 10 games a season is giving him confidence there. But when Bremer is already playing that position, he doesn't like to change Bremer on the right side. He doesn't like to go with a four-man defense. So what we are repeating here on the channel since the beginning, that the four-man defense with the people that we have at our disposal is not possible, it's shown again today. If we prefer to play with Alexandro instead of Danilo on the left and Gatti on the right, it's because at the moment, and Bonucci is not giving a lot of confidence to Max, but I believe that the supporters also lost a lot of confidence in Bonucci, but especially also to Gatti. So you clearly see that Gatti at the moment didn't pass the test Juve, maybe he will do. Maybe he will arrive next season, we have time. Maybe he will go alone, on loan one year in Serie A to play with continuity, we don't know. But at the moment, no. Hey, Michael, and we sold Dragujin officially. Yeah, but, but it was, he was already a Genoa player, not officially, but there were some, some targets quite easy to reach before he became a player of Genoa. Uh, Dragujin is doing well now. Why? Because he has a year of continuity in second division. So don't start with now being the, the widow of uh, Dragujin, eh, guys. If we have to be a widow of Dragujin, we have a problem. Eh? We have a problem. But anyway, uh, yeah, I agree with Alexis. He's saying, I think sometimes we are overrating youngsters. Look, Gatti, nobody saw him ever playing, but because he was a great player that was scoring some goals in Serie B, suddenly it was the new Chiellini. Uh, 
Attenzione, I'm not saying that Gatti will never achieve a level. But it's his first season in Serie A, where he's not playing with continuity in a team like Juve with problems. You are not allowed to do any mistake. We found that solidity, that when he's playing, he's playing most of the time versus smaller teams, when he had a bit more difficulties or opponents. He's putting a lot of... He's doing a lot of mistakes, guys. Huh? He's doing a lot of mistakes. So, for me, it's clear that Bonucci is not someone that Max is relying on as a starter anymore. Gatti, at the moment, didn't pass the test. Rogani as a central defender, yes, uh, because he doesn't want to move Bremer. He did today because he was obliged to. He was obliged to. And that is giving us a lot of indications. When people are saying, why Bonucci, why Bonucci? Well, uh, why Bonucci? Because we are some, sometimes we are obliged to play him. Uh, Gatti disappeared from the world. No, he's there, he's training, but he's, he's not convincing. Uh, I would rather see Bonucci right now over Gatti. On that one, I agree. Uh, I, I forgot Gatti was on the team. Uh, you see, Beppe, a lot of players in this team can't play 90 minutes. Chiesa, Pogba, Bonucci, Alexander, Quadrado, Miretti, Fagioli, Vlahovic, Di Maria. Uh, it's correct. It's correct. It's correct. And uh, <clears throat> this is also why I don't believe in the, um, in the Trident as, a official, in a, as an official pattern of we start with that every game. Because they are not in form. Tell me, 23, 24, new physical condition, new summer camp, new training. Then I can tell you, yeah, even if Di Maria will be even one year older. But I can tell you, yes, it can be a base, the Trident, with some rotation from time to time. But this year, I never, I, oh, I never believed in it. I always told you on the channel, it's not that I don't like. Of course, it's the most strongest one on the paper. And on the field. But if you do so, at the 60th minute, they are all dead. And it's, if you don't win 3-0, you have problems, guys. Huh? You really have problems. Because they can't. Chiesa comes from one year of injury. Look at today. And I see huh, all the people. Ah, but he doesn't start. Why is it possible? Miretti was injured. He comes back. He plays from the start. Not Chiesa. Bah, 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 bah. I see. Huh? I see what people are saying. But he, that the reality, it's hard to accept, yes. But the truth is, today, Federico Chiesa needs time to be a 100% starter again. Pogba, he will need, when, it, when he will arrive on time, when he will arrive on time, he will also need some time. We will not count on Pogba until the end of the season as a real starter. Then he can play one game as a starter, a second game as a starter, and then he needs to rest. Bonucci... It's over, guys. Huh? Alexandro. He had the season of continuity. But again, look, it's not the first time of Alexandro. De Chilio, forget about him. Quadrado. Today he played a good game. Huh? And today I saw him doing things that he was doing three years ago. But it's today. It's an isolated game. The season of Quadrado has not been good. Um... Outlet well, Scabiaso coming back from uh, for Sandro. For Sandro, I don't know, but in addition of Sandro, probably yes. Uh, no, I don't. I don't believe he will have long, but we will see tomorrow. Uh, I know who you would take on the back, Giuseppe. Who? Who? Uh, well, uh, we can take Riccio. We can take Richo, we can... Uh, Huysen, guys, I'm scared for Huysen because then people will destroy... If he misses one pass, we will destroy him. But Huysen is fantastic player, fantastic player. Huysen and Richo, I like them. Um, now, uh, from the youth academy, uh, if you're telling me from outside, well, I need to understand who will be the coach next year. That's... Uh, first of all, I need to understand who is the sporting director. Then who is the coach, what competition we will play. Will we play with four in the back? Will we play with three? Will we want to do well in the Champions League or is it Europa League? I need to understand that. Um, Salvatore Ciccone, four months with us. That's why we don't need more mids. Focus on defense. You know, Salvatore Ciccone, thank you for four months with us, Salvatore. Well, uh, Salvatore, 
we have a lot of midfielders. We have too many midfielders. And probably, on top of the one that we have, we will have three more at the end of the season. Zakaria, McKenny, Arthur. I don't know how McKenny is doing at Leeds. Zakaria, from time to time, he plays, but is he enough in a mega structure like Chelsea that spent so many and they need to put away some players? Arthur will come back 100%. So I'm not saying that he will stay. Rovella, Rovella will come. Uh, to be honest, even Ranocchia could potentially come, even if we can loan him out. But no, there we have a lot. And they're even speaking about, sometimes, you know, sometimes I don't understand. Some people are saying, eh, hey, Sergei Milinkovic Savic, uh, eh, hey, uh, Fratesi, and so on and so on. Uh, let's see where we are before, um, <laughs> no, Arthur, he will not stay, but he will come back. He will come back. Um, Buonanotte, Kaushik. Buonanotte, Kaushik. <laughs> um, we need some wing backs. Yeah, we don't have. We don't have. Massimiliano. I can confirm Paul Pogba was late. Okay, so now I can say it. And now, guys, if, if it's not Allegri that is confirming, I can't confirm. Uh, that's really sensitive news. Huh? That's really sensitive news. But uh, I can confirm Paul Pogba was late at the pre match team meeting yesterday. That's why he was not in the list for Europa League. It's a matter of respect for the group. 100%. 100% agree with uh, with Max. 100, 110%. 110%. Except if you have a valid reason. This one is on him. I You remember when I defended Paul Pogba? When I defended him so much about the story of uh, the ski? Here I don't defend. I don't care. He's at fault. Can we go to, to the game a bit? Ciao Emiliano. I hope. I hope. Uh, I hope so. I really hope so. Uh, just a few. Uh, not a lot. Huh? But guys, today I believe Juventus did well. I believe that Juventus did well. Except of the finishing touches. Look. Let me refresh here. Easy. Uh, here. Uh, ball possession divided between two. Uh, we won our duel. So we were a bit more aggressive towards the end. Uh, quite precise. You were 85%. I have to say that we were at the end of the first half at 90%. And 80% in opposition half. At the end of the game, we slowed down a bit. Uh, 85 in total, which is much higher what usually Juventus has. 75 is higher than we have. We were, for long parts of the game, much higher than in, in the end. We, we gave up and we lost there. 20 shots, only 6 on target, but still 6 on target. 30% um, shot accuracy, only one goal, and that's the big problem. That's an immense problem that if we can't solve well, you can do as much beautiful football as you want, it will not work. In terms of graphics, we start with that 3 5 one, one. Uh, I will show you the average position of Juventus. So Juventus is the black dots. Look how higher Juventus is. There was a big battle there in the midfield, but I told you, Freiburg is not a team that is pressing really high, but it's pressing as a block. Look at Freiburg, really as a real block in uh, purple. Juventus is playing with Danilo, uh, Bremer. Look where Alexandro was. Alexandro was super high. As a third man in defense, he was super high. But then he had to go out, so let's take out uh, the subs. Let's take out uh, Alexander and let's put Bonucci just to show you uh, the difference here. Uh, here I have to take away the subs of uh, Freiburg. So you see that then you have a Bonucci that is getting a bit more lower. Bremer on the right side. Danilo that played a bit more on the right in the beginning goes on the left. So you have a three-man defense. And then look what we do. I don't believe in the... When, when when I'm seeing 3-5-1-1, and I believe I was the only one that told you it is not a 3-5-1-1, we want to play a 3-4-2-1, not with Chiesa, Di Maria and uh, Vlahovic, but with a midfielder, Chiesa or Di Maria and Vlahovic on top. can be also Milik. Why? Because that midfielder that is playing this two up front is going down. And this is what we did with Miretti. Look at Miretti. I'm not lying, guys. Eh? I'm not lying. Eh? 
Kostic on the left, Quadrado on the right, midfielders, double pivot here, and then you have Miretti next to Di Maria with Vlaovic on top. This is how Juventus is playing that 3 4 2 1 in the beginning. Then you are taking away Miretti and you sub him with Fagioli. Fagioli, then at a certain moment, we stop playing that 3 4 2 1 because we are starting to play the 3 5 1 1. Then that's where we start to do because we tried, it was not working. Fagioli is there. If you are looking at Fagioli's heat map, I love to see these heat maps of one single player, how they enter. Let's see what is the intention of Fagioli when he enters. Fagioli, he enters at the half time. He's starting defensively in the beginning. These are only three minutes of the game. And then you see that he's 100% on the right side of the field. Defense, offense, defense, offense. So this is a real box-to-box -box performance of Fagioli playing with 3-5 two or three five one one until Vlaovic went out huh? then I believe that we try Vlaovic out because he was not doing a good game it was doing a really difficult game Vlaovic out you have Federico Chiesa in Federico Chiesa look at the uh, Federico Chiesa Chiesa he enters if I'm not wrong he enters here at the 67 minute so 67 minutes, that's where Federico Chiesa enters. Here. This is where Federico Chiesa enters. Look. He's touching his first ball. Six minutes later, here in the midfield, because he was totally isolated. That's where he's touching his first ball. Then, again, a lot of time goes before his second ball. His second ball arrives again six minutes later, and it is again here, because it was absolutely not working with him as a striker that was totally isolated. And that's where, at that minute, you are changing, and you are putting Moise Keen in to give Federico Chiesa more the left side of the field. But unfortunately for him, his game is over after that tentative here, Two minutes later, he's going with a tentative, and that's where he has this distortion, and it's the game is over for Chiesa. So we 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 can't judge Chiesa today. He we can say that he he didn't play. He entered to be isolated and then being a ghost. Uh, a ghost. Look at the man of the match. I don't know, Radovan. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you want to do a small poll? Ciao, Mohamed. We always say uh, we have more and, and important games. We have shortage. Yeah, yeah. Every time that we say, okay, we are here. We are good. Yeah. Joey, Beppe, is uh, Pressbox Live available to sign for everyone? No. No, Joey. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, man of the match. Uh, man of the match. Oh, what's the name? Di Maria. Of course, uh, who do we want to put there? Four names, guys. Man of the match. Quadrado. I want, I want to put Quadrado in. Quadrado. Uh, Di Maria. I would go with Di Maria, Quadrado, Bremer and uh, Locatelli. I would go with these four. Am I? No, I didn't like uh, Kostic that much. Of course, he's doing a fantastic assist. Fantastic. But I didn't really like the performance. Did I forget to say thank you to someone with a donation or not? Uh, no, I think I said everyone. If I miss it, tell me, guys. Uh, I see Ron. Let me check a bit the, the members, what they wrote. Um... Joey, Beppe, I already read that one. Salkat, Paul, yeah, the Paul is live. You can go with four names. Ciao, Sasha. Um, ciao, Sasha. Trying to read. Colin Wynn is there as well. Juve was always its strongest uh, when it had an Italian core. We need to go back to our woods. Perin, Miretti, Ravella, Fagioli, and uh, the other ones. Um, but look at Paris Saint-Germain yesterday. Paris Saint-Germain had one Frenchman, Kylian Mbappé, Bayern Munich starting 11. Bayern Munich had two Frenchmen. 
the roots are important. Beppe, rumors about the poll. <sighs> Guys, you know, I will tell you something. Uh, the poll is, was a great player at Udinese, was a great player at Udinese, was not playing well at Atletico Madrid, was not playing well at Atletico Madrid. I didn't like the poll at the World Cup, except of the final, I believe he did a fantastic final, but the World Cup of the poll was not great. I believe it's a player that is already going down. I don't want Paredes 2.0. Uh, great player, Adudinez, he was fantastic, huh? but I don't want a Paredes 2.0. Different players, huh? but you know, in, in the philosophy of, hey, wow, an Argentinian one, great midfielder and so on, because we remember how he was playing when he was in Serie A and that his time is over. Uh, then if he was not able to succeed with a coach like Simeone, that is well known to be a board defensive player, then uh, I don't know if it's the best for Max Allegri. I am not sure. Can be, but I'm not sure. Max Allegri really wanted Paredes, apparently, and it's not working. But what makes me laugh, what makes me laugh, is that a lot of people I see, that's a more and more and more a trend, there are more supporters of own ideas than the 360 degree. I explain. Everyone is there to criticize Max Allegri because he had a word in the Mercato. You know, he wanted Pogba, he wanted Di Maria, he wanted Paredes. Three total flops. Flops, flops, flops. Omitting, of course, Kostic. That is fantastic. Omitting a good first season of Bremer that had a bit of difficulty in the month of January. Uh, and now they took away from the list Di Maria because Di Maria is the best player of Juve. But let's take him away. This was not Allegri. So the only one now that Allegri wanted from three players is only two now. Pogba and Paredes. We don't want, we never want Max Allegri to speak about Mercato anymore because he is a real disaster. He changed Trovella for Paredes. Then they like the Paul and then, mamma mia, fantastic, fantastic. Let's get the Paul. And no, this is a bit, you know, the, the, the strange part. I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, I wanted to show you something that uh, if you are watching the, the morning videos, I love especially the day of the game, I show you um, some tactical things. Um, look, what did I tell you? What did I tell you about Freiburg here? They are quite equal, 42, 26, 32. But look at the, at the first part of the game. I told you, pay attention to the left side. Who saw the video of this morning with the tactical explanation where to pay attention to Günther? Hunter, the player from Freiburg. Do you, who, who saw it? Let me know if you saw it or not. Look, 60% on the left, then they finished the first half with uh, nearly 50%. 50% on the left side, where I said that's where they attack. That's where they attack, that's where they attack. Filippo Rosada watched it, grande. I said as well. Uh, Suraz, Cecilia, no the Paul. Eh, thank you. Cecilia is like me, grande. Uh, Matthias de Gunther, <laughs> the one, the one of today, Gunther, uh, what was his name? Um, so, you know, and that was what's really happening. Then I also said we have to attack them on the left, on their right side, because that's their weak point, and that's where the goal is coming. Cost it. Goal for Di Maria. Weak point from them. Then I also said that they will not press really high, but they will press as a block, and that's what we saw today. Look, they are really pressing as a unit, as a block. And I said, set pieces, that's where they are super strong at. Pay attention when they defend on set piece, but also when they attack, and especially when they attack on set pieces. And the goal is coming on a set piece that they luckily cancelled. We knew it. Di Maria, 70%. He won the uh, poll. 128 votes. We closed it because Di Maria was a winner, followed by Locatelli with 12, Quadrado with 10, Bremer with 7. I really love the performance of Quadrado, to, Quadrado today. Di Maria is another category. It's another level. Di Maria is a... 
it's too different it's too di it's too strong it's too strong mamma mia let me go because we have a uh, a message from Alexis. Alexis has said, I forgot to say that Bremer today was incredible. One of his best games. He was everywhere and was extremely aggressive. This Bremer was world class. Let's go, uh, Alexis, to the individual performances of the players. So if you're looking at player distribution, he was the one that touched most balls. 77, but equal with Angel Di Maria. This is a bit... And thank you, Alexis. Sometimes... I Thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, let me say that. I know. Oh, they just up updated. No, second one. 78 ball touched Angel Di Maria. That's beautiful. It's long time ago that I didn't see a player that is different than a defender that is on top of that ranking. Chances created for Di Maria, six. Balls touched, 78. Not always precise, 67. Uh, 20 passes in final third, 60. Total crosses, 8. Mamma mia. What a performance of Angel Di Maria. Bremer, second with 77. Much more precise, but it's another job when you are doing defender. Having accurate passes should be more easier than uh, when you are a, a striker or an attacking player. Manuel Locatelli, third. 68 ball touched. Um with a higher accuracy, 82%. Leonardo Bonucci entered for Alexandro, and he was at 64. Um, Federico Chiesa touched only five balls, guys. Miretti, 18. That's why I didn't understand people that said, why well, I don't understand why he was subbed off. For me, it was correct to sub him off. Uh, Miretti started well, finished really well, but in the middle, he totally disappeared from that midfield. Totally. Um, Alexander was going towards a fantastic performance before being subbed out. L Fagioli, 19. You see the two different... You see, we are all having a fantastic, beautiful uh, image of Fagioli. He touched one more ball than Miretti. He had Miretti had 100% pass accuracy, 75% for Nicolo Zagnolo. So Zaniolo missed uh, a bit more, a bit more. But he had a better impact, I have to admit. If you're looking at the attacking stat, player attacking stats, three attempts for Rabio, two on target, together with uh, Juan Cuadrado, three with two on target. Dusan Vlaovic, three, only one on target. And then you have uh, Kostic, Locatelli, Di Maria with two attempts. Di Maria, one on target, one goal. And then you have Bremer, Miretti, Chiesa, Fagioli, Moiskin, they all tried with the attempt. I told you, 20 attempts, 6 on target. Um, so you see, that's one skill that last year we were lack lacking at the diversity of players that go with attempts. That is also winning again a bit of trust, a bit of trust in yourself. D defensive stats, one tackles, Rabiot, Locatelli, Juan Cuadrado uh, on top, clearances, Bonucci with five, Rabiot three, Bremer two. Uh, yeah, I was speaking as a, as if he was German. Bremer is not German. Um, false one, Angel Di Maria, eh, the guy is fantastic. Ciao Alessio, ciao Alessio. So this is a bit about the, the performances. Is there something that you want to see, guys? A heat map from a special player? Uh, something else that we didn't speak about because we covered mainly everything while that you are asking me question I want to recap saying that for me Juventus played a good game a better game than Roma I was curious to see what Juventus would do with the ball possession which we had for a long time in the game because for me this was something where when I saw when I saw that versus Rama, we had ball possession, but we had no idea what to do. And we were academic, we were mechanical, we were slow. And at the end, we lost 1-0. Today, I saw a bit more intensity. I saw much more ideas. I saw, again, thanks to uh, Di Maria, a 
better creativity, but today we did one better step, but we totally flopped in scoring, which in football is important because in Germany they score, it's 1-1, eh? in their home. And that's really difficult. And we don't know which with, with which player we will travel to Germany. Yes, it's a big question mark. Alexandro will probably not be there. Muscular injury, forget about Alexandro. Eh? So our defense will go back in a shaky, shaky. Shaky, shaky. De Chilio should be there versus Sampdoria. Guys, I would... Uh, we don't, I would try a 4 3 3. I would try with a 4 3 3. I would try with a 4 3 3. But how? I will show you. No. Uh, let me try something. Let me try something. Let me try something. So if we know. That Chiesa is not there. Okay. Alexandro is out. Chiesa is not there. I would try something like this. Wait. Huh? De Chilio will not be able to start. De Chilio will not be able to start. I'm just trying. Huh? It's not because Chiesa is gone, Sandro, for 3-3. Three, three. It's because Alexandro is gone. But Alex, Danilo already played left back a lot of time, Alessio. Yeah, yeah, Danilo can play that position. Uh, but it's just for the game of Sampdoria, guys. It's just for the game of Sampdoria that I'm testing something. Uh... Let me test something. Rabio is at risk of sus suspension. That's also why Fajoli was on the bench. I told you, by the way, but nobody is listening to me. Di Maria, he needs to rest. He, he needs to play. Ealing Jr. had a, an infection. Keane will not be there. What do you think, guys? <clears throat> De Chilio enters in the second half. Can you rate that one? Taking into account that Keane has a suspension. Di Maria is really tired. Chiesa, even if he's okay, let him out versus Sampdoria. So that's option one. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about Baraneche as well, 10 toes down, but I don't have the image of Baraneche. <laughs> I have uh, a lot of players, I have even a Riccio, I have a uh, Huysen, I have Barbieri, but I, I don't have Baraneche. I will work on that one. Announce Yildiz, but I believe that Yildiz will be there now. Now, now I really believe that he will be there. Um, I was thinking it, now I am convinced. Um, so this is one option. Option number two, I will show you. Option number two, guys, could be uh, option number two could be hey, option number two could be this one. 
okay? Three men. Cast stitch. Yeah, that can be another one. That can be another one. Dino, emergency in attack. Allegri uh, at surprise, at the big surprise, Allegri could think about calling up Canal Nildis. <laughs> the surprise of who? Look, emergency in attack for Juventus against Sampdoria. Allegri uh, at the big surprise could think to call up some youngsters from the next gen between them Kenanillis. the surprise of who i think that uh the Marfi should start watching the channel guys or even going on twitter because i will not take the ownership of that one a lot of people are saying it since a week already it's already a week that we are speaking about it since that uh keen received the 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 red card uh Surprise of who? A sorpresa. No, but seriously. Sometimes I'm asking myself, but what is he smoking, Di Marzio? Uh, I like, uh, guys, respect uh, for Di Marzio. He changed everything in terms of calcio mercato. Uh, but the use of words, uh, yeah, we are in the future, sir. <laughs> no, the use of a sorpresa, it's, it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit funny, eh? Surprise of who? <laughs> Luca, ciao Luca, Beppe, notte Beppe. Ah, buona notte Beppe, I have to go to school tomorrow. Go to school, where the most of the people are Freiburg fans. Well, uh, Luca, tell them eh, that you are happy, but don't be too... Because you never know, there is a return game. Uh, Beppe, you really expect Yildiz to be called up? Yeah, I, I believe so, I believe so. I said it before Di Marzio. Eh? Uh, I said it before Di Marzio. Um, so, yeah, I, I believe he will be called up. That doesn't mean that he will play. That doesn't mean that he will start. But uh, called up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have no other choice, guys. We have to win versus Sampdoria. Um, and there is nobody. In attack, we have Vlahovic that is absolutely not in form. That's that's the worrying part. Milik is not there. Keane is not there. So your three strikers, two of them are not there. One is not performing. <laughs> Chiesa is not there. Di Maria could be there, but you risk to destroy him. So he needs to listen to his body. Eating Jr. could potentially recuperate because looks like it's not serious. So... Uh, or you can play with a 4 2 3 with Kostic on the left, huh? not as a left back, huh? as a offensive left. 4 3 3, Sule on the right, Kostic on the left. Di Marcus said four names. Yeah, but who? Uh, Dagraca or. Uh, Compagnon. Ah, here are the names. Okay. Suraz, good ones. So, the names are Pecorino, Cherry, Yildiz, and Mancini. From these players, the most exciting name is Yildiz, of course. It's Yildiz. Um, but Yildiz is not a number nine. Huh? That's not he's not number nine he loves to play in a 4 3 3 a bit more on the left side um but he's the most exciting one serri good player he already played with the first team in some friendlies it's not my favorite one mancini i really like i really like mancini um pecorino is on fire lately with the under 23 but I don't know if he will become the next big thing. I'm hesitant about um, 
about Pecorino. It can be called up eh? because logical way Pecorino is a nine. Um, Yildiz is not a nine. Yildiz is not Vlaovic. Eh? It's, don't be influenced by the goal that he's scoring. He's not a nine. Uh, this guy one day will uh, send someone to the hospital for uh, for a long time. Eh? <laughs> Mamma mia. At the start, he was really doing assassin tackles. Um, it's strange because it's not the dirty player. Eh? He's absolutely not the dirty player. He's not someone, you know, a hateful player. But he's going with these tackles. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. Keen doesn't like Mancini. Uh, yeah, it's another Mancini. Eh? Why no one talk about Turco? Um, but we can talk about Turco if you want to. No, I like Turco, but... I believe, look, if you're really speaking about number nines, our number, our under 23 is not at the top with the number nines, to be honest. Uh, and also our next our, our our under 19 it's not somewhere where we have really the beast uh the last real number nine that we had there was uh moiskin uh when he was young eh? when he was you know, fantastic fantastic back then uh before that you had shiro immobile but the real number nine from our youth academy maybe that's what we are missing Yildiz is not the number nine offensive player. Fantastic. He will be a phenomenal. We have defenders. Huysen. Uh, I like Luis Haza. More technical player. Um, Beppe, would you take Verratti for next season? Well, I, you know, I would be happy with Verratti because he's a Juventino. But I said it multiple times. Good player. But for me, for me, yeah, guys, overhyped. For me, overrated, but that doesn't mean he's trash. Guys, in the world, it's not like uh, 0 or 10. Sometimes they are, you know, like in the middle somewhere. Plus player, good player. Sometimes he's going with fantastic games out of the world. But it's one that he's taking. One yellow card a game. Uh, he's never scoring. He's taking some risks. A lot of time. Look, yesterday that goal is on him, but it can happen. But he's he's taking a lot of risk because that's the way he's playing. And also, I saw in the chat uh, Andy Golding, uh, Tushar. He is also another injury prone prone player. Another injury prone player. So. Look, that's the message that I love. This is the message that I love. Um, beautiful gesture between Vlahovic and Kurva. In the second half, he comes close under the Kurva Sud to recover a ball. The fans start cheering on him. He raises his head, applauds, and touch the coat of arms. What does that mean? Ah, he's touching here the Juve uh, logo, the coat of arms. <laughs> I had to watch in Italian because the coat of arms, I never heard about that. Uh, at the points, they start singing chants for him. Uh, Calma, Dusan, you have the qualities. This is, guys, I know we are in a, in a world where it's, again, uh, where I just said it, Zero or ten. Shit or phenomenal. There is no middle. If you are suffering, we are even pushing you even more down. You suffer. Well, let's kill you. Uh, which I don't like. I, I'm not like I'm not like that. I don't like I never like it. When I see someone on the ground, I give my hand to help him. Guys. Guys. Help. Be a kind fucking person. Sorry that I uh, cursed. Sorry that I said a bad word, but... Yeah, yeah, he's doing bad. Of course he's doing bad. Help him. That's what I love. He did a, a disgusting game, Vlaovic. Help. 
he knows, he already knows that he did really bad. He knows better than you that he did really bad. Now, Lotaro, he stays on the ground. Lotaro stays on the ground. Anthony, I love watching Vlaho hugging Angel after the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, pay attention. Huh? It's not only, you know, it's not only hugging and kissing and, uh, you know, otherwise I could be a fantastic player. If it was only, you know, motivating, uh, kissing the badge, showing passion, you know, it would be easy. You need also the qualities, you need to perform. But it's only one year that he's there. He's a guy that is, since the end of last year, in a difficult moment. What do we want to do? We want to kill him? I don't know. Beppe, if you look behind you, there is a jersey of that of Miretti. Let's watch out for him next season. No, 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 no. Miretti is there. He's not injured. He's doing okay. So don't uh, take me into responsible for that. Um, Lovic will make miracles next season. He will be mature till then to a real nine. But... At Juve, out of Juve, I don't know, but I have no doubt that Dusan Vlaovic be, will be fantastic. But look, don't forget, and one day I will come back on that live and on that channel, and I will tell you, you were all wishing that Vlaovic out of the club because he was a fraud, because he was a flop, and now you are saying that Juventus, uh, they sold him, and uh, that he's becoming a fantastic player. It was because of Juve that he was bad. So decide yourself, or we wait, we are patient, and we give time to a player, and we support him, being honest that he was bad, or uh, then don't complain eh, if we sell everyone. Eh. Eh. You remember Ossiman last season, and me, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Um, Adbin, ciao Adbin, uh, you said it right. I'm behind F and Toronto traffic, such a F and day. Ah, okay, I understand what F and mean. In the beginning, I didn't know. Um, oh, yeah, but of course, huh? of course. He will score against Sampdoria, then it will be uh, only Sampdoria. Then he will score against uh, Inter. Ah, yeah, but it was a long time ago. Uh, we want to see him scoring versus Napoli. But honestly, the, the season of Vlaovic is not great. There are reasons why, but that doesn't excuse the season of Vlaovic is not great. He needs to do better, of course. Dom, Beppe Allegri is killing Vlaovic. He has to help him uh, not just say his goals will come. Dom, Dom, I, I'm sure you are smarter than that. <coughs> Dom, what does that mean he has to help him? Today, we played a much better football compared to today with last uh, Sunday versus Roma and you will already see a difference. Compared to today with three months ago and you will see a difference. Compare all the balls that arrived for Dusan where he did not the right movement, where he was out of position, where he missed because the ball went to him three times, only one time on target. Then you will see that today you can't blame uh, Max Allegri today today okay if you are speaking about hel helping him you clearly saw with footage that Max stayed with him after a training to show him body movements to give him tips it was also said that this is something that we are doing with every player single players we are trying to help them we wasted a lot of chances. Of course we wasted a lot of chances. We are all pissed off of that. And we said that. Now, who 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 missed all those chances? Max. Versus a lot of team, he did a lot of mistakes. Today, we saw an improved, better team versus a team that was giving us the ball possession. And when we receive the ball possession a lot of time we don't know what to do with the ball today we saw some ideas some better thing but we were not able to close them and that's really something that can't happen 
because we have problems. Beppe, yesterday you mentioned players also saw what people say on social media. I started to be careful when I criticize any player that could destroy them. Be kind, please. No, wait, wait. It doesn't mean that now we we don't have to say, you know, we we can be objective but that's normal when you are a football player you also need to see the reality when you are playing well when you are playing bad uh, but there is a difference between Tushan Vlaovic did a really bad performance today the season of Vlaovic is not great or Vlao flop I wish we sell you you are a flop you are disgusting you can't catch a ball overrated finished player It's our player. It's our own player. Our own player that is in a difficult moment. What are we doing? Push. Destroy. Finish him like in a killer instinct. Finish him. That's what we are doing. I don't like that mentality. Then, oh, everyone is doing whatever they want. But it's true. Players are watching social media. I'm speaking with players um, sometimes. People watch, they are on Instagram, they are on Twitter, they see. If you were a player, you would never go on social media to see what people are saying about you. It's human, you go, you watch. Then some players, they are able to block and to say, I don't care. <coughs> some players, they are influenced by it and more and more players are influenced by it. So I always try to be honest, but with respect especially towards our players, especially towards our players. Uh, Don Valley parking lot, uh, horrible. Eh. Salvatore Ciccone, grande. Thank you for your donation, buddy. If it was your decision, is Allegri coach next season? Um, I, I know, I know. I, no, no. If it was my decision, no. Uh, but, 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 I have immense respect for Max Allegri. That doesn't mean that uh, I was expecting more for him last year. I was expecting more for him in the beginning of this season. Especially in Champions League. But I see that he had really a difficult time with a team that was really in difficulty, with a management that was in difficulty, with a lot of mistakes done on the Mercato. But anyway, I was expecting more. I would have never taken back Max Allegri. I would have taken him back in a few years. But if you change from a winning Max because you want to go towards another type of football and you go with Sarri and you go with Pirlo, I think it was a good decision to stop with Pirlo, but then you have to go towards another coach with these kind of ideas because you have to try. It was too early to say we tried, we stop, especially with COVID and so on and so on. Um, so I would not have taken back Allegri, but I believe that he's the best ever coach in the situation that we are in. The Zerbi would have collapsed. Italiano would have collapsed. To hell would probably not have understand where he was and what to say and what to do. So I believe he's really the perfect man now, today, in that situation. Can he do better? Yeah, of course he can. But um, at the end of the season, the most important part will be who is the sporting director? Who is the sporting director? If the sporting director is there, he needs to be aligned on a coach and with a coach. If the sporting director says, I don't like the ideas of football of the of Allegri, you stop, basta, ciao. If the sporting director is believing in Max, you continue with Max and you continue to build a team for Max. It's not me that needs to be happy or not with Max or not. I have an opinion. I am a supporter. I am allowed to have an opinion. But these people need to be united and to go. I always said, I hate 
Mourinho, but I respect him a lot, but I hate him. I would never want him at Juventus, but if he comes... I will support him. I am not a fan of the Zerbi, but if he comes, I will be his first supporter. I will wish him all the best in the world. If it's Max, I will continue to support like today. Anyway, uh, generous question. Who will replace Allegri, especially in the difficult situation that we are in right now with management and attacks? Who is the better than Allegri would agree to coach Juve? Uh, it's a fantastic question. Today, nobody. Except of... Montero, nobody. We don't even we don't know where we will go, eh, guys. The 15 points can be given back, but that doesn't mean that you will finish the season in top four. The 15 points can remain, and you are out of top four. Uh, maybe you will be in top four, but UEFA will say that you can't participate. Maybe you will. Worst case scenario, they will send you in second division. I don't believe it, but you never know. So who will say? To hell. Okay, I come. What competition team you have to win the Champions League? Ah, eh, but we are not sure that we are in Champions League. Ah, okay. Thank you. Come back. Call me back when you know, when you figured out your out of the field problems. This is where we are. Eh? This is where we are today. So today it makes not even sense. Today we have not even to speak about another coach. Good or bad. We finish with Allegri and then we see next season where we are, which is the sporting strategy, and then we go with a coach. Alain Yetarian, and I believe it's one of the last messages. Uh, Ciao, David Mirabella. Vlavic is in a flop. He just does what he is told by Allegri. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, that's a bit exaggerated. Huh? He's just being told what he's doing by Allegri. It's not Allegri that is telling him, take the ball with your header and you put it out of the, of the goal. On the other side, he's adapting in another way of playing. And, and I agree. You know, it's all... Again, eh, we are always like that. We always go towards... No, it's because Allegri is saying him... No, Allegri is not telling him to do a really wrong pass. Or to go on one-on-one -on -one and not be able to dribble his man. Or to open on the left with a basic easy pass. Or on the right side. You know, no. These are technical mistakes from a player that is absolutely not confident today. But again, I don't want to repeat everything since the beginning. Otherwise, we, we are in a loop. Alan, one of the last messages. Thank you, my friend. Really appreciate it. Alan is saying, you can't compare Osiman and Vlaovic. Even if Vlaovic plays for Napoli, he will be top scorer. And Osiman with Juve, he would flop as well. How many times have we seen Vlaovic isolated alone with no help in the box? But apparently, you only want to talk everyone, eh? about Vlaovic. So we finish with Vlaovic. Uh, I hope that we could speak about something else, but thank you, Alan. Um, I said it and I repeat it. The way we play at Juventus is not the best way for a striker. We know it. And this is a reality. And this is where um, we have to blame our... our blame I don't know if we can we have to blame it's a choice it's a choice and it's true that probably Osimen would not score 30 goals like Vlaovic will not score 30 goals with the way that we are playing today uh, it's correct because we play in a different way a lot of time isolated alone especially in the beginning of the season but again here we are speaking about a team in the beginning of the season that had serious problems today i don't believe that vlahovic was isolated like uh, um, like today it's on vlahovic guys there was no isola isolation Today you had Di Maria that was on fire. Today you had Kostic that was giving him some crosses. You had a Quadrado that was giving him some crosses. You had a lot of passes towards Vlahovic. And today he was in real difficulty. But it happened also in other games. Huh? And more he will go with negative performances. More he will feel the hate of some people. More he will go into that trouble. So, But... It's true that probably with the way of playing of Juve, it's not this. It's absolutely not the same as the one as Napoli today. We know it, huh? We know it. We know it. Um, 
we can't we can't lie about that it's shared like i always said there are to juventus to blame uh vlaovic to blame but it's not only on one player eh? it's on uh on everything management to blame maybe i'm just inventing eh? maybe if we would have had like two fullbacks as we need them since a few years maybe we would have played totally different maybe if we would have a bit of luck Federico Chiesa would have been a starter since November October as planned September because we were speaking initially about some people were saying you know maybe September I always said January but September was the first initial plan of Federico Chiesa if Di Maria was in form before the World Cup, if we had some foot, you know, if Pogba would have been there, but with the ifs, we never know. But the beginning of the season was disaster. Disaster. Now I saw versus Rama, a slow team, but that created. We hit three times the post, guys. Huh? Today I saw a slow team that was accelerating a bit with creative ideas that were a bit missing versus Rama. I saw a beautiful Juve at Nantes. Today I can give you some games that we didn't play only for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Today we didn't even stop playing after the 1-0. We stopped playing when Chiesa was injured. I believe that was a big shock for everyone, for every player as well. And we were with 10 men on that moment. We couldn't do any change anymore. Well, um, we didn't stop, you know. So I believe that they are partially uh, to blame. Not forgetting an injury, a World Cup in the middle. Sergei Milinkovic, I was saying it yesterday, Sergei Milinkovic after his big flop at the World Cup 2018, we need a lot of time to come back. Earlier, someone was nominating Vialli. He had really two difficult years at Juve. The first year was a total flop. The second year, really difficult with injuries, a big injury that keep him away from the field. And he was crying uh, when uh, Lippi came. Because he didn't think he was at the at the level. Guys, let's finish with one beautiful thing. It is Sasha. Sasha, that today on the 10th of March, because I am already in 10th of March and Sasha as well, it's my birthday. Juve won 1-0. They did it for me. A Juve win is surely the best birthday gift. Uh, can we please say happy birthday to uh, Sasha. Um, Sasha, happy, happy, happy birthday. Best wishes, I wish you the best. I'm already happy that Juve gave you a gift. Uh, I'm happy. I'm happy for Sasha. Happy birthday for Sasha, everyone. And that's how we close the live of today. Uh, I had a nice time. Look, uh, you know what I like today? That uh, we were able to speak about a lot of things, except of one person that I said that he was not welcome. He didn't even write again. He understood it. He left by himself. I have to say that people were uh, super, super nice. Pro Vlaovic, against Vlaovic, pro this, pro that, against that. We have nice football discussions. I really liked it. I really liked it. Um, happy birthday to our uh, one of our women on the chat. Sasha, Marian, Cecilia, BT. Today it's uh, Sasha that is uh, celebrating the International Women's Day on the 8th of March and on the 10th she's celebrating her birthday. Grande Sasha. Uh, Siamak, fantastic person. Siamak in the chat. Thomas Makloff, fantastic guys. Um, speaking about women, speaking about women, uh, maybe... Maybe. <laughs> Pueblo Juve was uh, represented in the chat with El Mat... I don't see really well with El Matasanos, I believe. Uh, 
Pueblo Juve Presente. Hola, Pueblo Juve. Now, speaking about women, uh, probably I will have a, a really nice news uh, uh, soon, soon, soon about uh, women. So I had a meeting uh, today with Juve. I can't say, of course. Huh? You know, if you want a behind the scene about Federico Chiesa, uh, now I can see it. Uh, that was hard to keep the secret and acting normal because I knew since long uh, that there would be uh, the life with Chiesa. Um, and I also knew that I would be the one because I knew that Zambruno would leave and they asked me if I could host the life now with, uh, with the players. So I knew about it. I knew about Federico Chiesa and so on. And I couldn't say anything to anybody, uh, to my wife and to my son. Uh, wow, that was hard. That was really difficult. You know, not saying anything. The only thing I said, like, you know, really a few days before I said there will be a big surprise. Uh, but that was really hard. Like, uh, I can't say, I can't say. I can't say it's Federico Chiesa. Incredible, incredible, incredible. So hopefully uh, he will do well. So uh, you did well keeping it secret. I said nothing, eh, Sasha. Merci, Marcello. I said nothing. Eh? Um, any updates? On, well, the last updates we had uh, were... Let me go back uh, so that I will read you the, the right words before starting to invent because it's quite late in the evening and then... Uh, so, muscular problem for Alexandro. Uh, Chiesa, he felt pain in his right knee and he will be evaluated tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw here... Uh, um, and Di Maria needs to be evaluated because he was really, 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 really tired. Uh, and then uh, I saw also the words of Max Allegri that said, I believe it's nothing really serious. But that's something, uh, yeah, he says what he's feeling. We have to see. Uh, Okay, ragazzi, uh, it's Sule time, Thomas Maklov. I, I think he will play versus Sampdoria. Um, ah, for people, if you want to know, maybe we can close with that. I will be, uh, I will be there for the Coppa Italia game, Juve Inter, the 4th of April. Is someone thinking to go or not? I tell you right in advance this time, huh? The 4th of April, Juve, Inter, semifinale, Coppa Italia, I will be there. Um, if someone uh, is there, let me know so that we can uh, we can have a chat. I would really love to have a chat with some of you guys in the channel, even if I know we have an international community. If it's an Italian community, it's super easy uh, because they live in Italy. When it's international, it's something a bit more difficult, huh? Uh, Andy, I was thinking of going, but probably not now. Uh, I went. Ah, not because of you. I, I was thinking, not now that I know that you go, I will not come. <laughs> uh, if we draw USG, Union saint gilloise Juventus, we will meet in Belgium. Or, or, I was always uh, hoping that we played versus Union saint gilloise because it's really near to home. But... Uh, no. Where, what city are you uh, living, uh, sir? I don't know if I asked you last time or not. Peniel, I want to go. I need a ticket to apply for my visa. Eh, that's important. Budapest, I get to the finals. I expect to see you there, Bep. Um, would be nice. St. Peter's Slave. I live in St. Peter's Slave, sir. Where are you living in St. Peter's Slave? 
I live there. I, we live in the same city. I live here. What do you mean? Who are you? Who are you, sir? Why are we not doing a video together? What is happening, sir? We need to go and we take a coffee or we, we go for a, for a ice cream in the McDonald's. Maybe, maybe it's my, uh, my neighbor. Maybe it's my son and I don't know. Who are you, sir? <laughs> I live in front of Schoenches. What is what the fuck is Schoenches? Schoenches means the shoes, but which shoes? No, I don't know, guys. Uh, I'm always here. I don't know about Schoenches. Schoenches means shoes. He lives next to the shoes. The McDonald's. You don't know the McDonald's. It's great, huh, Bogdan. I don't, you can go. Hey, guys, what do you think? I will go with sir in a tree in a three-star restaurant. No, we go first to McDonald's and then let's see. A sandwich place. No, I don't know the sandwich place. Scrunches. McFlurry. I like the one with Oreo. I like the one with Oreo. Except at the end when you are taking, you know, the last one, the last uh, spoons, you clearly see that it's uh, rigged. Uh, it's water. They are giving you water. Sir, he doesn't want to tell me anymore. Peniel. We'll be traveling to UK on the 15th of April, but we'll uh, like to watch it. It's the 4th of April, eh? Juve Torino, uh, Juve Inter. Beppe, we need a 2-0, no 1-0, but it's a win. Eric, thank you for your donation, buddy. <laughs> we needed the 4-0, and how we played, I think it was even possible today. But no, eh? F one zero. I am not. I am not reassured. Schoenches in the drank centrale. Where is the drank centrale in uh, Sim? Guys, you know things that I have absolutely no idea what you are talking about. Beppe, please, can I watch with you? What do you want to watch with me, Peniel? You want to watch me? What do you want? Julian, Sule and Miretti will score their first goal versus uh, for Juve versus Sam. We are gonna win with 5 0. Vlaovic will score as well. Grande, Julian. I have a good memory, eh? I have a good memory. Salkat, Andy, they never work in the US either. At least they are not discriminating. Guys, what are you talking about? I am in Ghana, I'm going to UK. Uh, the Schoenches, St. Peter, Slew, McDonald. What kind of discussion are we? Then, the, the, then Julian is telling us Buona, Buona Sera, Sule will score. Uh, the Garage of Mini. Yeah, that's, that's a bit further. McFlurry Machine. What kind of discussion are we speaking about here? Die, it's late. I believe that everyone really needs to sleep now. Marco. Eh, nobody told me that I have put on again the historic shirts behind the uh, you want to see better yeah yeah but now there is allegri <laughs> marco meola 12 months whoa what a beautiful icon next to my name hey the golden one, the golden one. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful one. Marco Meola, 12 months together with us. You see, I have put the, the icon shirts in the back. Nobody sees them, huh? Nobody sees them. Uh, people ties. Hey, the people, they watch my channel. I don't know what they have in their uh, mind here. Uh, attenzione, Marcello. Marcello is happy with the win and also because he spoke with uh, St. Peter's Lee uh, people. Well, we need to go on the people from Belgium, you know, from Halle, St. Peter's Lee. We need to go and do something together with uh, Marcello as well, uh, sir. And then at least we are not one on one. You never know in live, huh? Eh. Uh, but Marcello he decided to go with five, um, with five subscriptions on the channel offering them randomly to Siamak. I'm happy for Siamak that is a, a loyal one of the channels since I believe the first week I opened the channel. Uh, Punsara, every day watching the videos, commenting, 
uh, Ferrat uh, that was asking me about the Ultra. If I start speaking about that, we are starting here for 30 minutes. So next time I will answer you about the Ultra. Uh, Marco Meola didn't receive it, but he renewed himself for 12 months. Love the Platinum one. And indeed. So we had Siamak, Punsara, Ferrat. I missed two. Who are the, who are the two other ones? Eh, Amatsako and Robin Banks. Grande. Here with a whoop whoop. Thank you. Robin Banks. Fantastico. Thank you, Marcello. It's party in the chat. The, the birthday of Sasha. Uh, the win of uh, Juve. Ferrat is asking who bought me a membership. Thank you. It is uh, our friend Marcello. Marcello F9. Marcello. Marcello F9. Here. This person here. F9 Marcello. Uh, Beppe, did you had a call Diego from Brazil? If I call Diego from Brazil, no. No. Um, Anthony Trimboli, I want to come on the 4th of April, Juve Inter, but it's too close to Inter, uh, to Easter. If we start like that, this one is too close to Easter, this one is too close to Christmas, this one is too close to Wednesday, this one is too close to Monday, and then we never do anything in life. That's actually, this is why I'm going on that date, because I go with my son, I take him with me for his first Juve Inter. I already saw an Inter Juve. I never saw Juve Inter. Look, just to finish. Um, I saw my first Juve game. My real first Juve game was Inter Juve in San Siro. Inter Juve in San Siro. We were winning 2-0. And then they came back 2-2. 2-2. And then I waited years and years and years and I bought the tickets, uh, quite expensive, for Juve Inter. Um, I bought them, I was super happy. And what happened is that all the tickets were cancelled because of COVID. It was the first ever game before the lockdown, just right before the decision of lockdowns, where uh, there were no supporters, no supporters. You remember before the stop of football, that last game we won 2-0 with Dybala, fantastic goal, and I believe Ramsey as well. Um, well, they canceled the tickets. I had the tickets. They paid back. Eh? That was really great. They paid back. Um, and I, I never watched a Juve Inter, so I can't wait to, to see that game. Um, Beppe, did you check out the stadium pictures? Um, yeah, but I believe it started after I was there the last time. I believe it started in September or October and I was there in uh, the 31st of August. So I didn't really check. Um, Thomas, rumors say that Pogba was late to training because he was watching Gigi's Juve and the video was a bit longer than usual. Yeah, like today, like today. Like today, again. That's why Pogba was late because of me. Grande, Paul. <laughs> what the hey, guys? Another. Do, do you think, seriously, I, I already explained you, huh? but do you think it's a um, right decision or not? As a coach, to say you arrive late, you don't play. Whatever the situation of the team, uh, Whatever the importance of the game, you arrive late, you don't play. Just yes or no, one. not yes, but my life, uh, whatever. I was, when I was a kid, I was at school. Yes or no? Handy, Andy, sing, hundred percent. I agree. Correct decision, Julian. Yes, to make a point. I agree with Sir. Yes, Salkat. Uh, right decision, two hundred percent. Yes for David. Um, Marzin or Madzin. Yes, for sure. Okay. I saw some people, they were uh, they were not really agreeing with it. 
they were not already 100%. They said, I know, because it's an important game. We have to win. It's one of the most important game of the season. And uh, Ferrat was there the last time, 2-0. You, uh, you were lucky. No. Uh, for me, I don't care. Rules are rules. Uh, it's not rules when it's good for you, because then... And you have Juve, whatever, a big game, you are late. No, you are late, you are late, point. You have to be on time. Then there is always that academic being late. Huh? For what? If you have a car accident, <laughs> if, uh, you know, your wife needs to go to the doctor at that moment because she has a problem, you know, she broke her leg or whatever. There are reasons why you are late. You can be late in life. If there is no reason, no valid reason, well, okay. It's not about having balls, Omar, I believe. But I tell you, it's not the first time. It happened with Moiskin. It happened with uh, Bonucci. Putting him out in a European game versus Porto because he was doing blah, 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 blah versus Palermo in uh, Serie A. And versus Porto, it keep, keep, kept him out. Huh? So it's not the first time that uh, Allegri is taking this decision, but it's not only a Allegri decision it's the code of conduct of the club you are late without reason for coach decides what to do yeah Borna it's still live but now we close uh, la... <laughs> better now uh, okay guys buonasera no, I was about to start another topic uh, buonasera Madzin Anthony, Borna, Andy, LJJ, Peniel, Jerry. Um, yeah, Peniel will try to go there for you, Inter. Grande. Ciao to Siamak, to Ferrat, to Styler Z, to all the people in the chat. Grande. Forza. Forza Chiesa. Forza Pogba. Buonanotte. <laughs>